Uh, my name is uh, Cesar Sanchez. I'm Associate Director for Echoes Global. Also, I'm faculty of uh, entrepreneurship and strategy uh, in the business school. I need to put my WhatsApp on mute. And uh, we're very excited today with a, with a great guest um, that will uh, talk to us about Africa, digitalization, how technology is you know, changing the way things work in, in those countries. So, um, and a way to start, I'll make a short intro uh, for Pedro. So Pedro is known for uh, organizing the first uh, TEDx in Cabo Verde and for being the founder of uh, Generation B Right, a youth empowerment organization. In 2017, he won the prize of We Are Cabo Verde Best of the Year in the category of Innovation and Entrepreneurship and was selected by the US government to participate in the YALI program. In 2018, he was selected by uh, MIPAD, MIPAD as one of the most influential people in the world of Afro descent in the world under 40 years old and was chosen by former President Obama to be part of his first leadership initiative in Africa Obama leaders. At age 31, he became the youngest member of uh, the current government of Cabo Verde by being appointed as Secretary of State for Innovation and Teaching Technologies and Education. So I will leave you now with uh, Pedro. He has, uh, has prepared something great for us. And um, yeah, thank you, Pedro, for being with us. You can un unmute, there you go. Thank you, Cesar. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. I would like to greet everyone that is watching at home or different places in, in the world. Um, firstly, to the students of University of Utah, um, it's um, a pleasure uh, to talk about um, innovation in Africa and specifically about Cabo Verde, telling you guys more about my country, even though in, I'm in a formal attire. Uh, I want this conversation to be very relaxed. Um, it's going to be an exchange of ideas and um, we should have fun during the way. I think that's very important um, because if you have fun, you are more creative and you can find better solutions. Uh, and that's what we want with, with innovation. Also, um, I would like to uh, greet uh, people that are not from the University of Utah. I know some, some of them uh, signed to be present on this session. So it's, it's a pleasure um, to be here. Uh, well, I'll be talking a bit about Africa. Um, I know that I don't have a lot of time, but I will start speaking a bit about Africa and then I will go uh, to tell you specifically about my country. So the challenge uh, here is to present Africa, um, the potential of innovation uh, in the continent. And I think that's, uh, that's huge. Um, just recently, uh, Google and um, was uh, Google and IFC, they released a report um, that says that in 2025, 5% uh, uh, of the GDP of Africa will come from digital economy. We're talking about uh, $180 billion. So there is a, a, growing, um, uh, a growing impact of innovation in African uh, economies. Um, and that's important. That's important for uh, the youth. Uh, and we are entering in the, the fourth industrial revolution in the world. First, we have the steam, then we have electricity, then computers, and now artificial intelligence will change everything. And everyone is uh, thinking about uh, what will happen um, to uh, the continent uh, of Africa. And I think great things will happen to the continent, even though we have to have, we have to make major efforts. I think we are presenting to ourselves uh, as a great opportunity to change how things are in our continent. So the best asset that we have as a continent, for sure, definitely 100% our youth, um, for sure. Um, their will to change how the things are, uh, is incredible and um, they will be for a driving force uh, for, for, for that change. Uh, and we, we need to prepare them for the um, uh, key uh, features of the fourth industrial revolution. I'm talking about 
uh, not just artificial intelligence, but also virtual reality, cloud, um, all the technologies that are very important for the future. So if we uh, want to be a continent, a developed continent, we have to um, bet on our youth and that's that's why I, I leave a challenge for 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 uh, for the leadership of African uh, countries. Every time that I have opportunity to speak with a counterpart, with a politician from an African country, I want to know what they are doing for the youth. Um, that's uh, very very important. And um, in Africa, we have not just young people but talent as well. Uh, in last year. It uh, was estimated that uh, Africa had more or less 700,000 uh, developers, and we are considered the fastest uh, growing continent uh, in terms of developers, uh, because uh, young people are looking at uh, the digital world as an opportunity to improve their lives, uh, opportunity to improve as well uh, their participation um, in uh, the politics of their country, in the civil society, in, in different ways. So there is a, a huge opportunity. Um, and just to have an idea, in um, 20, 000, uh, 2019, um, we uh, had 1.3 billion Africans. And it's estimated that in 13 years, just in 13 years, we're going to double that number to 2.6 billion Africans uh, in the world. And 40% of this population uh, is already connected uh, digitally. Uh, I'm talking about uh, now in, 20, uh, in 2020, 40% of the population is already connected to the internet and they use the mobile. 60% uh, of the internet access in Africa is uh, through mobile. So there is also a lot of opportunities faster and better internet quality um, uh, because internet is improving. And I think that's a huge opportunity for, for, for young people. And then we have our startups uh, here in Africa. We have unicorns, uh, startups. Unicorns are startups that are uh, evaluated for more than $1 billion. So we have Jumia, uh, Promocider, and also Celsi. Uh, but last year we had um, another uh, fintech, uh, an African fintech that was considered a, a unicorn, and we have the famous Mapenza, um, a, a startup from 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 Kenya that started to do mobile uh, payments, and there was an example for the world. I was impressed with Mapenza, but not just me, everyone, because um, the challenge um, to respond to the difficulties that we have here in the continent is also the engine for creating innovation. Um, and that's important. Imagine a continent uh, where sometimes it's not, it's not easy to find an ATM machine. Imagine a continent where you have a big distance between banks, but you still need to make payments. So Africa is one of the leading continents on mobile payments because a lot of a major part of the population also use cell phones. So I think um, we're going to see more and more opportunities for Africa. Right now, we are preparing our continental free trade area. That means a single market. And I think it's, uh, it's going to be very, very important uh, for, for the, 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 the continent. Um, and um, also, the, the numbers, the, the estimation of the numbers is that 50% of uh, the population of Africa will be concentrated uh, in cities in five years, in 2025. So that will present a lot of challenges that will be overcome with innovation. Uh, so Africa, the only path is to bet on their youth. Uh, we as politicians, we need to listen more and hear more what the youth uh, wants to say and also create opportunities for them. We cannot, uh, this is uh, the, the goal of the politician should not be provide income for people, but instead provide opportunities. Um, and that's what we are doing here in, in Cabo Verde. I will jump uh, to, to speak a bit about Cabo Verde. 
We are located uh, in the middle of the Atlantic. I hope that you guys in the University of Utah, not just students, but researchers, teachers, can visit us soon. I, I know that Caesar will do. Uh, and and I, I, I hope we can bring some friends uh, with him. But also I want to uh, be first uh, from, I, I want to say thanks to two very important students of the University of Utah that already collaborate with our ecosystem, Peyton and Amanda. They did a great job. Cesar was the, the, the bridge uh, between the students of University of Utah and also our ecosystem here in Cape Verde. We are making efforts to, to be an ICT hub uh, for the Atlantic. Um, so in a co collaboration with the, the talent that you have as well in the University of U Utah, uh, we uh, gave steps forward and that was very important. So Peyton and Amanda, thank you for your collaboration here in Cape Verde. A lot of people that collaborated with you still uh, talks about it. So it was it was fantastic. Um, so I was telling we are a small country in the Atlantic, in the middle Atlantic. Um, if you want to go to Europe, it will take you just three hours and a half. If you want to go uh, to um, to visit our brothers from Senegal, it will take you just one hour by plane. And we are the closest African country to US and also the closest African country to Brazil. Um, we share the same language uh, of Brazil and Portugal and so many other African countries that speak Portuguese, um, namely Guinea-Bissau, Mozambique, Santo Tome y Príncipe, um, other countries that speak as well, uh, as well Portuguese. Uh, in terms of US, we have a big community in US, not, uh, in Boston area, we have 1 million Cape Verdeans, and that's the double of our population. Um, we arrived to US um, because the, the, fish, the, the people that were fishing whale were passing here um, in Cabo Verde, and they were getting their crew here from Cabo Verde. And then people started to immigrate to US, start making the fish nets, and that's how we start our community, Cape Verdean community in the US, and, and they, are, they are based in, in Boston area, but, I, but they are spread uh, across, across the, the country. Um, and in, with, with that, that was the work that Amanda and Peyton were doing uh, here. Um, they were trying to uh, help our ecosystem to connect with the diaspora. Uh, and, and I think, Cape Verdean, Cape, uh, not just Cape Verde, but other African countries, we need to connect more and more with the diaspora because we have second and third generation diaspora. They are doing fantastic things uh, across the world. Uh, each summer I receive here Cape Verdeans that are working for IBM, LinkedIn, Google, you name it. Um, these guys, uh, they want to be connected with um, their, the country of their fathers uh, the, and the country of their grandfathers. So, uh, their parents and and I think it's it's fantastic. So I want to show you a small video about Cabo Verde. I will try to share the screen. Uh, and this video, uh, let me see. Okay, this video is uh, shows how we are preparing ourselves after the COVID nineteen. Unfortunately, Cabo Verde was one of the most affected countries by COVID-19, not because of, unfortunately, the, the, the number of the people that passed, but also but because of the, the, the effect on the economy. Uh, now we have uh, more or less 4,000 uh, cases, um, 400 uh, active cases in Cape Verde, so a small number. We need to, to go. We need to go to zero. I hope so. Also, the vaccine will help. But heat, heat is really bad because of, of uh, the impact on, on our tourism sector. Uh, we rely a lot on tourism sector. Uh, our it represents thirty percent of our GDP. So during uh, one entire year, we were uh, closing Cabo Verde to prepare ourselves to everyone that come and visit us um, in the coming months can feel safe. And I think that's the, the most important word here in Cape Verde, feel safe, because this is a safe place. Um, 
Cabo Verde is a place where you, you, you're never going to be chased by your color of your skin, your religion or your sexuality. It's a place where people can, can feel safe and they can feel welcomed. So let me just start by putting this small video. <laughs> during this period to take care of ourselves to express ourselves in other ways once again the act of contemplating makes perfect sense the landscapes the sensations the discoveries the vibrant colors the new plants the old desires arrivals nature tranquility memories at this time, we accept and enjoy every day, every minute, every photo, because we feel a genuine desire for everything to return to normal and for us to be able to travel again. So we are we are ready to to welcome uh, you as you see, um, and I would like to speak about uh, what we are uh, doing here in terms of innovation. Kidvert uh, to build a real innovation ecosystem, you need uh, three things: uh, talent, market, and capital. Uh, so these three things are are really important. But before you have an ecosystem, you need to have a, a community. And sometimes we forget about all of this because the, all of these these things that we do is is, is uh, for people. Innovation will not serve any purpose if you will not improve people's life. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's trending or it's cool or uh, if instead of uh, going up of the chair and turning on my lights, I can do it with my voice. Well, it needs to uh, it needs to improve my life. If not, uh, it's being a waste of of time, uh, putting time and, and resources on, on innovation. So here we are investing on infrastructures. We created a, a technology park um, that will be uh, inaugurated uh, next year. Um, and also we are investing on a C-Sumarine cable, LLink, to improve our connectivity. Um, and that's very, very important. We want people that uh, visit us and also Hey everyone, I make money trading online with expert option. Uh, Check out my results for today. Voice. Pretty good, huh? I've only been trading for a couple of weeks. Okay, I think we are back. Caesar, can you hear me? Yes, okay. So I was saying that uh, we are building our tech park, our improving our, our connectivity in the internet, even though in Kidvert, uh, <clears throat> we have um, we are the country in West Africa with more access per 100 citizens. Uh, we have 80 access per 100 citizens, what is, that is very, very high for Cabo Verde. When you look for um, all the rankings, internet access, um, human rights, uh, all these rankings, um, human development, normally Kit Verde is on uh, number one, number two, number three. Just recently, Mo Ibrahim released his, his index of good governance in Africa and Cabo Verde came out as, as ranked num number two in the entire continent. And, and we are proud of, of that, but we don't want to lead just in, in, in Africa. We, are, uh, we, want, we have the goal to, to, to lead uh, in more things. And the size of the country is not important or that important anymore. And that's why from Cabo Verde, we want to be a hub uh, of ICT for, for Africa. Uh, we want to be a safety entry path for the, the continent of, of the future. Um, and let me uh, start, let me continue to saying that besides infrastructures, we also um, are betting on human capital. We create, we launched the program two years ago called WebLab where we train our young kids in robotics and in coding. Um, I would like to show you some pictures of it. Uh, I don't know, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, 
Can you? Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. It's launching. So might have opened in a different window. Is this containers? Can you see the container, uh, Caesar? That, not not the picture. We can we can see the icon of the picture, but the picture didn't open all the way. Maybe you can stop sharing and then share again in the picture. Yeah, um, sure. Maybe or you can select your desktop for the sharing. Okay, can you see it now? It's loading. Yes, we can see the, the okay, container so now. Basically, these, these are the containers that I'm talking, all of them with solar panels. They are on all the secondary schools of Cabo Verde and kids can learn robotics and can learn coding. In two years, we trained 12,000 kids. Don't forget that we have, uh, we have a small population, just 500,000 people. So we trained uh, 12,000 kids into coding, into robotics, and it's not mandatory at, at all but the classes are always, always full. And it was fantastic for uh, reducing our school dropping rates uh, because kids, they want to participate on it. They want to be uh, part of, of uh, learning. And let me see if I can show you as well some picture uh, of inside the... Um, Okay, so this is inside one of those containers. As you can see, kids, uh, we have 12 computers uh, and kids can learn how to code in there. And we have a lot of uh, girls uh, and that's what we want. We want young people to learn more ICT and also more uh, girls into coding. So this is one fantastic project called Web Lab, a project of the Ministry of, of Education. Um, we also created a program called Cabo Verde uh, Digital. Uh, and I would like to talk about Cabo Verde Digital because this is a project that uses are also being helping us uh, with, with connections and also with your fantastic network. So basically Cabo Verde Digital is this sense of community uh, gather universities, uh, talent of the youth, startups, government, everyone going the same direction. Um, and everyone um, uh, want the same thing, that is to create an ecosystem for, for Cabo Verde. Um, with that, we created different programs. One of them was Go Global to allow our uh, startups to be present on international scene, to be present on relevant events because if you go to international events of innovation, international events of technology, you're not gonna see a lot of uh, representation of African startups. And you don't have to be a wizard to know that um, if you continue like that, the future will not be bright for the continent. So it's again, responsibility of governments to create opportunities. And that's what we did with the program Go Global. Um, we participated on the Web Summit, the biggest tech event in the world. We participated on Collision, uh, also on African Innovation Summit in Rwanda, uh, recently Angola Innovation Summit. Um, and when I say we participated, it's not just uh, me going there as a politician. Normally we take our startups uh, to Web Summit. We uh, took our entire community. We took our universities, we took 10 startups, we took the regulator, we took NGOs, everyone going there. But before we prepared them uh, with an intensive week of preparation because these, these events are, are, are huge. Um, and also we created a stand. We were the first African country with a stand on the Web Summit. And it was fantastic because everyone was surprised with the, the great things that we are achieving here in Cabo Verde, the, the great things of what the government is doing here. Um, so. This is one of the programs of, of, uh, of Cabo Verde Digital, Go Global. Another one is CVD Voucher. You know, in, in Cabo Verde, there are not a lot of uh, venture capital, 
uh, not a, a lot of capital seed for, for startups to, to start. So we decided to um, create a voucher where we give for each founder it can be two, uh, two people for each startup with less than 35 years old because we bet on youth um, we are not afraid to, to do it. We gave them uh, three minimum wages of Cabo Verde. Um, and not, not just the money, um, is also, uh, we're also giving office space, also giving technical support. Uh, well, they don't have to worry with anything besides making their idea uh, a reality. And that's what we want. A lot of them will fail, but we believe that a lot of them will succeed for sure. So this program is also, it's the first digital entrepreneurship program in Cabo Verde. Uh, we already created um, 35 startups, but our goal is to create 50 per year and support 100 entrepreneurs. And, and um, another program that we created is um, Code Verde. That is a program to uh, convert young people uh, that are unemployed into coders. So we did a partnership with Code Academy um, from the private sector, and they will train uh, Kipverdians, and, and then they will uh, lend them a job. So this is very important for the training of the future. We don't want to have just uh, uh, people being trained. We also want to support them in, in finding a, a job. So we want to train 100 Kipverdians per year, uh, but also our main goal is to teach uh, coding as a foreign language and be the first country in the world to teach coding as a, a foreign language. So again, a small country, but with big dreams, with big goals. And I think that's, that's important. And also recently with um, um, the challenges of the tourism sector that is essential and super important for Cabo Verde, we um, decided to create an open platform of ideas uh, so young people can respond to the challenges of the tourism sector now. So instead of hiring a consultant, consultancy firm, we decide, no, let's do it in a different way. Let's map the challenges of the tourism sector and let the young people that have ideas and they are using innovation um, and they can support us with, with, with finding solutions. I think it's more and more important to involve young people in finding solutions for the problems of the world. Um, if you let them uh, apart, um, you, no one will benefit from it. And, and it's not just saying with a narrative that young people are the future. No, they are the present as well. Um, we have the most educated generation of ever. Uh, people have uh, internet that is a powerful tool of collaboration and when brains get together, it's unbelievable. It's the first time in this world that we have 50% of the entire population is connected to the internet. Uh, of course, we have also uh, the dangers of the internet, uh, but I think it's, it's unbelievable. And we need to um, take advantage uh, of it. Also here in Cabo Verde, and I hope a lot of uh, young people from, from, from Utah from Salt Lake City and from other cities of US are listening. Um, we are creating a, a visa for, for, for digital nomads. More and more people are not working. They don't want to work in offices like this. They want to go outside. They want to go to different places of the world. So why not spending six months in a perfect, in a perfect place like Cape Verde with amazing beaches. People are super open. You have sun the entire year. Um, the food is fantastic as well. I, I will take you to eat a cachupa with, a, with me. That is a traditional dish of Cabo Verde. Um, and we want to create that opportunity. So we are creating a, 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 a visa specifically for digital nomads. It can be a coder, can be also a graphic designer. Well, uh, if someone works uh, in a place that can, someone can work remotely, they can come here. And they, they do all the process online. So we're going to launch this, this uh, project soon. Um, and yes, we are creating more and more programs through Cabo Verde Digital. I hope people can visit us uh, digital.cv. It's our landing page. We're also on Facebook with Cabo Verde Digital, on Instagram, uh, also with, with Cabo Verde Digital. Um, and we, um, here in Cabo Verde, we want to be a platform. So. 
our main goal is to attract talent to Cabo Verde. And we believe that there are a lot of uh, areas of Africa where the talent is not being, um, people are, the countries are not taking advantage of the talent that they have uh, in their countries. So we um, believe that we can do it. Um, as I said, our place, we never had a war in our country, is a very, very safe place. Uh, we don't have corruption. Cabo Verde is a fantastic place. It's not me that says it, it's people that visit us, visit us and also international rankings. Um, and what we want is people, researcher, inno in researchers, innovators, investors, um, founders, people that want to create um, their startup and, and being innovative to come here to Cabo Verde. Um, and from here to connect with, with African people, with, with people from, uh, from Europe, with Americans, with Brazilians. Um, that's why we are a crosswalk between continents. Cabo Verde is in the middle of the Atlantic, 10 islands, uh, full of, of joy, full of uh, people uh, that have morabeza, that is the art of receiving foreigners. Uh, and that's very, very important for us. The only issue that we have is a lack of water. Uh, we face severe droughts in the last uh, couple of, of, of years. We were facing the most severe droughts of the, of the last uh, 50 years. So imagine having a country that in, in two, three years, we have like one week of rain. Um, but the, the audacious of Cape Verdeans and also uh, resilience uh, always make us find uh, new solutions. And I think um, there are a lot of opportunities for Cabo Verde. It's a country, we are, like I said, 10 islands, uh, with sun the entire year, with wind, uh, also um, with the, the strength of, of, of the waves. We are creating now pro projects of desalinization, taking the salt out of water for use for our, our agriculture, also using drip by drip and many other uh, technologies that many other innovations that are being used uh, for our strategic um, uh, uh, sectors. Um, and of course, we are a country uh, that is um, very young. There are a lot of things to do uh, in the future. I think we are living exciting times in Cabo Verde because the future will be uh, fantastic. Um, and Cabo Verde, we, will not, we are not afraid of our history. We started as a marketplace for slaves. So uh, the Portuguese, because we were a colony of Portugal, they used to take, they used to go to West Africa, countries at the time like Senegambia, that was Senegal and Gambia and many other African countries and sell them here in Cabo Verde to take to the big plantations in Brazil. So what we want is reshape and retell that history using innovation, using our geographical position, because all the sea submarine cables, uh, they pass through Cabo Verde. Um, so we can, we see there is an opportunity for, for us, an opportunity for, for Cabo Verde. Um, we are recognized um, also by selling um, e-government services for other African countries. And we are very well positioned uh, in, in terms of e-governance. But now it's time for the private sector. It's time for young people, time for the talents of young people. Uh, they have the will. Uh, we, just to, we just need to create them uh, opportunities. And that's it. I, I'm, it's a pleasure to speak with, with everyone. And internet is giving these possibilities. Sometimes you think that these times of COVID-19, everyone is very negative. Things are not going well. But no, this is the time for us to put our shoulders up, try to find solutions, uh, use internet and also all these connections that we have around the world to create uh, new projects and to um, give our contribution uh, and to think, okay, in uh, 20, 30 years, what was I doing uh, in 2020 when the world was hit by COVID-19? So that's our responsibility to not to, of course we can be sad, and sometimes feel a bit down, but never forget about your legacy, never forget about your contribution to the world. And um, if I can give a recommendation to young people, don't uh, focus on, on the goal, focus on your path. I think that's very, very important. Um, as, um, 
as uh, Barack Obama told me, uh, I'm part of the Obama Foundation as well, and uh, he, he told me that because sometimes we want to be in that position, uh, be president, be uh, CEO, but we forget about the path. So that's very, very important. Things will come uh, when we get out of the bed and connect with other people, try to do good for, for the others. And this is not just, again, uh, something super altruistic, but also is, is something that I really believe. Put passion on your projects, uh, believe uh, on you, um, stop sometimes to hear the others. Uh, I know it's not easy and take the, 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 the face of your screen all the time. Don't let uh, all these applications to uh, get all uh, your energy from you. Um, I have Instagram, I use it. <laughs> you guys can follow me, Pedro Lopes 99. <laughs> I have LinkedIn, I have my Facebook page, but like sometimes, uh, stop, read a book. Uh, I'm right now uh, reading Learning 3.0. Um, connect with someone, even if you use internet, try to use it for something that you know that you are creating. And that you, instead of uh, someone just controlling you, your energy, your things. Um, so I think that's very important or else we ended up robots controlled uh, by, 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 by applications and we cannot do it. Uh, cell phone is a tool for creation as well, for opportunities. Uh, and I think that's, that's very important. And that's it. <laughs> I hope that um, I, 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 I think I, I, I thought I talk about my, my country and about Africa, but I'm ready to, to answer to some questions. No, oh, this was great. I, I think, you know, we, we all learned a lot about what Cabo Verde is, what uh, you have done, and the, and the future path that your country has. And, you know, programs like uh, teaching, you know, children, teaching coding as a second language, I think that's something that other countries can learn, you know, so congratulations for that. Uh, we do have one question, a couple of questions here, actually. Um, one uh, from uh, Buzz Welch. Uh, he's the managing director of Echoes Global and also finance faculty. Uh, he says, thank you for uh, speaking with us today, Mr. Lopez. We are very much looking forward to working more closely together. One question that I'm confident we'll be addressing specifically to Cape Verde, uh, what steps are being taken to reduce dependence on tourism and expand innovation? Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Buzz Welsh. Uh, well, uh, as I said, we were um, already giving important steps in terms of investing on innovation, but now with COVID-19, we are giving, uh, we are going even more fast. But if you come to Cabo Verde, you're going to see a huge tech park that we are building close to the airport. We are training our young people for um, the challenges of, of the future. Our technical training, um, right now we are designing a lot of programs uh, for coding, um, just today, I had an, a very important meeting with an international company that wants to create um, a, a coding center from Cabo Verde to the other to serve other countries in Africa. So those are those are the things that we we are doing. We are betting on uh, other things uh, because we cannot rely just on on the tourism sector. And something that we can explore is um, diversifying our economy with innovation. We are a small country. Uh, we don't have a lot of industry, of course, uh, and we need to, uh, like we export uh, e-governance, we need to export as well products that are being made, um, digital products from our youth service, services or apps or software being developed by our youth that can create their, their startups and they can they can export their services to, to the others in, in the rest of, of the world. And I hope that in the future, I, I can tell you that the, the GDP of Cabo Verde uh, relies more in innovation and, and less in the tourism sector. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, another question that we have from uh, Riley, uh, it's, the question says, what countries do you collaborate with for technology? 
Um, yes, we collaborate a lot with uh, Startup Portugal. Uh, Portugal is being uh, an amazing country uh, in terms of innovation. They are doing fantastic things. Um, and their community, Startup Portugal, is um, uh, a brother of, of Cabo Verde Digital because they are supporting us. Also, we collaborate with um, uh, the Israeli Authority for Innovation um, in the beginning of the creation of, 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 uh, of Cabo Verde Digital. Uh, but we are completely open uh, to collaborate with other countries. And I hope that we can do it because um, here in Cape Verde, we are a place to make bridges uh, between Africa and other, other countries of other continents. So um, as I say, we are uh, the safety entry path to the continent of the future Africa. Thank you, Katie. Great. Here we have another question from Katie Abbey. She's the assistant dean and, and also she's the head of business career services. She actually also helped us, uh, Pedro, with uh, recruiting uh, Amanda and Peyton. And um, oh, yes, and she's also going to help us to recruit more students for your um, different things that we're working on uh, with you. Uh, so she, her question is, what skill sets are, are, are the ones that are more in need? Because we know that, you know, you're looking for coders and people that can do those things. But what other skill sets uh, do you believe are, are needed or, or that you could use in your country? Well, I think more, I always shoot for people, not for skills. Uh, Cape Verdeans have a great sense of community and that's fantastic. That's fantastic for starting anything. But what I think we need to improve more here is critical thinking. Uh, the, 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 the challenges of the future will be teaching uh, people how to learn. So learn how to learn. I think that's very, very important. Uh, collaboration is essential. And if you ask me what will be, what will be uh, something that I will teach uh, to keep Redians more and more and you put my, all my efforts on it is collaboration. We have a big sense of uh, uh, community, but um, we uh, need to collaborate more uh, in projects because I think I always say that here in Cape Verde, you know the the cultural, the corporate culture of, of, of US, the corporate culture of Korea, corporate culture of Germany, um, but not just in Cabo Verde, but we as Africans, we have problems to pass our, our, our culture to our corporate culture. If we can do so, it would be amazing. Here in Cape Verde, we have all the skills that a startup need. We are amazing story, uh, storytellers, like when you see a lot of people uh, surrounding someone in an international conference, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you. I'll show you that in the middle is a Cape Verdean telling some some crazy story. So amazing uh, storytellers, very very passionate about life. Uh, people that are very very happy, um, and they have connections everywhere in the world. So network because we have Cape Verdean spread all over the world. So network storytelling. Uh, energy and passion are very, very important for developing an, uh, an idea. But normally we have problems with uh, charging the ticket in, in the end, making money out of, of ideas. So that's what we, we really need to change. And I think if we need to um, invest more, we need to invest more in, in teaching collaboration. And that's why all our projects that we are doing with Cabo Verde Digital, normally you cannot participate by yourself. You need to participate with someone else uh, in order to, to, to improve the sense of, of collaboration and also to pass this idea um, that um, we as Cape Verdeans have a, have a lot of values with ourselves, with our, in our culture that is fantastic for, for making business and not just seeing business as a bad thing, you know, going to work and always looking at the, the, the clock. No, we need to have fun during the way. You know, I always say that if you're not having right. fun, do something else. Uh, life should not be something that we complain uh, about it all the time. Even in difficult times, we need to find find a way to, to, to smile. That's very important. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll go with the last question uh, from Isaac. What is the regular, regulatory regime for uh, private capital markets in Cabo Verde? As you can imagine, private investing, while very, while it's very lucrative, it's risky. 
Well, we, we have our, our, it's not risky because our framework is like Kikip Verde. If you look on the internet, it's very stable in terms of uh, politics, in terms of uh, economic, uh, economical, and it's a very stable country. In terms of economics, we are our our, um, our money is indexed with with the euro of Europe, so we don't have crazy inflation, you know, going up and down. Uh, and also, normally, our framework and regulatory framework is the same of of Europe. So that gives the, the the stability for people to to invest here and to invest. But you have to see more than just five hundred thousand people. You have to see. Uh, our diaspora, and you have to see the company. I'll give you the example of a fintech company that are uh, investing, uh, that are uh, launching their services here in Cabo Verde, but their goal is to uh, hit the diaspora in Boston. Uh, and if you think about it, it's, it's genius because you spend way less money in marketing that here, if you do it here, than you're doing in, in, in Boston. And because everyone has family in Boston and everyone is sending money, everyone is, is, um, is, is doing uh, exchanges of, of sending money to the family and, and, and supporting the family. It's a fantastic service. So uh, if you look uh, about how keep word is stable, I, I'll, I'll tell that it's, it's, it's pretty stable. I know that in other uh, African countries, it's very difficult, it's very risky to, to make businesses, but not here because our regulatory framework um, is very is pretty much the same as, as in Europe. Great. And um, here Katie Abby also says, you know, no more questions, but how's the scuba diving? Scuba diving, yes, you can do scuba diving. Um, water sports are something fantastic. Uh, we have 10, 10 islands, but each of them uh, is different from the other. So we have one called Fogo that is a volcano. Uh, you can visit a volcano that just two years ago was in eruption. You can go to Boa Vista and you can climb the volcano. It's unbelievable. Um, they say the Americans uh, shoot the, the landing on the moon in Fogo. <laughs> uh, it's, it's a joke, but because the, the place is, is very dramatic, it's fantastic. Uh, but also you have Boa Vista in Sal, islands with beautiful white sand and blue and, and green uh, uh, ocean where, with, a lot of, uh, with a lot of fishes and you can do a scuba diving. Um, wow. Just to imagine our, our national team of football is known by the blue sharks. So <laughs> <laughs> we, we, ne we don't have problems with sharks here, but you, you can see them. A lot of species that uh, you can do scuba diving here and see many Many animals, not just in, in um, uh, Boa Vista, in, but uh, normally in Mayo as well. Well, each island is different. You have Santa Antão, that is a place where you can do trekking and see all the mountains. Um, and Cabo Verde is also known, CNN said that is the country with more musicians by square meter. So every, every, everywhere you can see someone playing the guitar, playing Morna, that is not our national uh, music and just sit down, uh, relax. Uh, and after, uh, uh, after a, a long day of work, you just can go for a swim uh, and, and hear some, some music. The quality of life in Cabo Verde is really high. You don't have transit, uh, traffic. Um, people are always smiling. And it's a place where you're gonna see your children uh, just just smiling all the time. And I think that's the, the, the goal of life, right? You smiling and having your, your kids smiling with, with you. Awesome, thank you. Also kite surfing, a lot of kite surfing. I've seen. Yes, we have world champions in kite surfing. Yes, kite surfing is go. the main thing of, of, of for, for Keep Virginia's the thing. Number the one. We can normally win titles is in, uh, in kite surf, but you can do surf, you can do scuba diving, you can do many other things. Uh, and the other day I was trying paragliding, so yes, you can do a lot of <laughs> Great. Well, I want to thank you on behalf of the entire school and everyone watching this. Uh, if we were all in the same room, we will clap, you know. <laughs> uh, we just want to thank you for, for taking the time to meet with us, to tell us more about your country. Uh, this was a great opportunity for us to, to learn more about you, to learn more about Africa. And for sure, in the near future, we will have 
more opportunities to work with you, to bring our students to your island and uh, so they can actually live there, work there and also get some academic experience. So this has been amazing. Thank, Thank you, you again Caesar. for your time. Uh, I want to say that you are uh, uh, truly a rock star because you made this uh, happen uh, and not just this, because this is just a conversation that I can tell about my country, tell you more about my country, about innovation in Africa and the things that we are doing here in Cabo Verde, but also because of this collaboration, allowing uh, people from uh, the University of Otaku to collaborate with our startups and also to come here. And I hope that will happen soon. That's how we change the world. Sometimes we think people uh, are have this tendency of being racist, of, we are racist sometimes because we are ignorant and we don't know the others. So uh, yeah. once we know the others and we collaborate with the others, we know that we have much more than unite us than, than divide us. So this opportunity was, was fantastic. Thank you, Caesar, for your work for, for our country and also for your university. And it was a big pleasure to speak with, with everyone. Thank you for all the, the questions. Um, but just don't think about Africa as a place uh, that you should not visit. Go explore, people are friendly. Don't listen to everything that, don't believe in everything that you, you read about the continent. Some things are not true. People are, in some countries, uh, you have challenges of course, but things are improving. In my country, you will feel safe. Uh, I can tell you that and, and you will feel welcome. Uh, so thank you again for, for this opportunity, Cesar. Thank you, people of University of Utah. I hope that soon I can uh, visit you guys and also uh, meet uh, the, the students and teachers and researchers of that amazing university. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now I will... Um...